public policy and the public sector on this matter of trying to turn and change the mix of energy sources and fuel and drive the economy is a major driver of change. Uh, this is one of those inflection points where public sector actions and starting in California, at least in the U.S., is really changing the mix and changing the way a trillion dollar economy is going to propel itself. So what Jan is doing both on the council and the air quality management board, what LA's utility is doing, major, major pieces of the equation. So thank you, Jan, for being a part of this. Um, I just want to know, it's it's uh, very early in the morning on Friday, and we have representatives from Utanabe, from Nikkei, and uh, Japan's sort of Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, the representatives from the German Business Council. This is an international matter. It's not just a uh, parochial issue of, of LA. It's a, it's a thing that's driving the globe's change in how we do business. I don't know if we have all our panelists, because I don't know all our panelists. But, uh, Hi, David. Josh DeCal. Josh, how are you? Nice hey. to meet you. Um, Josh, we may begin with, with you, unless we're all you want to begin. That's right. uh, no, I'm easy. I'm You're easy. easy. <laughs> I'll just sit in my coffee. I think um, about that more. <laughs> well, we're talking about the, the uh, the mix, the carbon diet, adapting this change, and uh, um, I've been at this four years. I'm sort of a new convert to this issue, trying to keep up with my 29-year-old son who's been in forever. And so I thought we'd have sort of we have a little um, uh, new fuels, energy change, and the old $40 an hour jobs that Rod represents in the, in the uh, fossil fuel business sort of discussion here. So, Josh, your your work uh, says. Grease dumpsters, dumpsters of Florida, farms in the Australian outback to the laboratories of the Department of Energy. Talk about that, what you've learned in that journey and what that mix ought to be and how we get there. Well, I grew up in Louisiana amongst oil refineries. So for the better part of my young life, I watched uh, a fairly interesting mix of policy and sort of pollution politics deal with um, you know, deal with the human impact of energy. And I watched a lot of my own family members get sick from acute pollution from these refineries. So it set me on a path that I would make a commitment for the world to find ways of making energy green. And that's been a 23 year path. So in that time frame, the past 10 years, I've traveled around the world and made a documentary called Fuel, which I was able to interview some of the greatest minds on the planet in terms of energy and carbon reduction. And have really come full circle in that in this journey, we got to see incredible solutions. And I should say, you know, we, I qualify that by saying, my fiance and the producer of the movie, Rebecca Harrell, who's here with me today, spent a lot of time in that journey with me. Can you get us into the Academy Awards? <laughs> um, no, it's very tight. They only give us two tickets. Okay. Yeah. So, so a couple of the things that we've seen recently, which have been very exciting, is certainly algae. <clears throat> Fuel from algae is becoming a huge uh, opportunity for investment from the oil and gas sector, as well as from the, from the alternative energy sector. And we're seeing these incredible collaborations from traditionally what would be called fossil fuel energy and traditionally what would be called alternative energy. We're seeing these two now come together. So after my long journey of, of seeing something that I thought was the enemy, I've really come full circle and now looking for ways to form partnerships between traditional energy companies and what we see as a new sector of energy. Rebecca and I just drove a car powered by algae gasoline across the country to launch the documentary Fuel in Theaters. And it really was quite a, quite a landmark experience, both for us and for the industry as a whole, because nobody believed that you could make gasoline from algae at this early stage, what's called an early stage in the development of the industry. So we're seeing these vastly different technologies that allow us to play together to keep the infrastructure, much of the infrastructure that we have in the oil and gas and petroleum sector that mitigate what has been the dangers, which are the carbon emissions and the human impact emission and the environmental impact emission, and really slipstream into new feedstocks that can supply us with a whole new generation of fuels for our vehicles, for our homes, for our businesses, and ultimately for a green grid that includes a smart grid for our buildings as well as a smart grid for our cars, where the fuel that we're pumping in, we may not notice the difference as consumers, but there's a radical difference in terms of the production pipeline and in terms of the emissions outside the vehicle. 
Thank you. I want to I want to slip in uh, Rod Spackman here. If you read your bios of Rod, you probably didn't notice that he began as a uh, an environmentalist working for PER and Green for Green Corps and other things. That's really not on here. But, but really, uh, Rod, as you know, is with um, a small company. I don't know what is it called. Uh, Chevron. Yeah. And, uh, and and we are using uh, the products of Chevron and like uh, companies to drive this economy, especially here in California and Los Angeles. And it's appropriate for Rod to bring sense and sen sensibility to this conversation of where we are now and how we're going to get to a change behavior and a change mix of fuel. So I turn it to Rod's back. Thanks, Dave. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, and I'll try and leave a lot of time more for the dialogue because I think I'll be as interested in what's on your mind as it is what you might think is on mine. But let me just briefly talk a little bit about Chevron. For those of you that, that don't know our history, this is our home. California is our home. We've had a 130-year history in this state. And if, when you look at us as a corporation, whatever you think of our, our industry, uh, we have a very rich history in this state. And we either directly or indirectly touch about uh, 70,000 jobs in this state. Uh, one in every 250 people working in California have some relationship with our company, either through the resources that we purchase and goods and services and anything else that we do, or the direct employment we provide. So as we look at the building a sustainable energy future, it would be very uh, prudent of us to presume that we should be very involved in looking at how the, that opportunity can develop and do it in a way that, uh, that benefits everybody to the, to the greatest extent possible. And it comes at us and from a variety of different perspectives. Uh, obviously, we have an obligation to continue to reduce the foot carbon footprint of our fuel. And all of you will be familiar with the low carbon fuel standard. It was interesting to hear Josh briefly talk about uh, algae. It was, uh, I was reading a, in an internal document the other day where our venture capital group is now doing some work with an algae algae manufacturer that's that, or an algae company that's basically taking algae and turning it into a biofuel. But that isn't the only biofuel initiatives that we're looking at. We have a, an aggressive program underway with UC Davis right now that's looking at taking agricultural waste and doing the same basic thing and turning it into a biofuel. And it has a relatively low carbon footprint, you know, you know, when you look at other types of uh, other types of alternative, ethanol being the obvious one that we all know about, corn-based ethanol is not a very attractive uh, product if you look at its life cycle uh, from a carbon footprint perspective. Another area that we spend, we've got a lot of work going on right now is something called Catchlight. Catchlight is a, is a joint venture project with uh, Weyerhaeuser to take their waste stream and do the same basic thing, extract the biofuel out of a waste stream. The good part of that is that, one, you're not getting that food source, you're not doing some of the things you have to do effectively uh, when you're, when you're uh, developing ethanol as, a, as, your, uh, as your base product out of a corn-based system. So a lot of initiatives in areas that, areas that will be important as we continue to reduce our carbon footprint. The one thing I do want to say about, you know, about a, our, what I call our mature technologies Refineries in California are the cleanest refineries anywhere in the world. So notwithstanding Josh's history in Louisiana, we have as a, as a matter of how we run our business, the efficiencies in our business, we've been at the forefront of that for a variety of different reasons. One, because Jan Perry, who just left, and the AQMD has ensured that we maintain the very highest standards in the operation of our facilities. And, and two, because energy efficiency for us was as much about the cost of doing business as it was in, in reducing our carbon footprint.